I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time for another Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon netcast. And I tell you what, we've got some geeky stuff this week as well. We always do. We have geeky stuff every week, but sometimes it's geekier than others. You know what I mean. Anyway, let's dive into, well, actually, you know, let's do something different. I'm going to try something this week that we don't normally do, but I think will be fun. And that is look at the items in the blog. The blog, of course, being Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon, D-R-B-I-L-L dot C-C, which of course stands for computer curmudgeon, as you well know. And, uh, you know, we'll look at those articles in succession as an intro to the program just to see how it works, just to mix it up, you know, make it make it different each week. So let's look at that right now. In the news this week, Google launches a new music service. Facebook users reel from porn span spam attack. That's hard to say. Sony weighs assault on cable TV. We've got a geek software of the week, virtual clone drive. Revision 3 bets on HTML5 and drops Flash player development. And the Kindle Fire Teardown puts build cost at less than $3 above retail price. Okay, so see, now that gives you a little introduction into what we're going to be talking about this week on the Netcast. How cool is that? Kind of a little intro thing there. Okay, anyway, first item, What you just saw was a first item. Google launches a music service. You know, Google's getting into everything. Google, I tell you, they're going to have just about every kind of service you can possibly imagine before it's all over with. But this is a music service. This was a, uh, a news story in Reuters. You know, Reuters is that news service kind of folks that releases these things, kind of like the Associated Press, except they're not the Associated Press. I don't know. Anyway, Reuters says, Google Incorporated has turned on the music at its online store, uh, aiming, this is hard to read. See, I'm reading it off of my netbook. I don't have my tablet. My tablet's out in the car. So I'm using my netbook, and it's a little harder to read because it's so small. It's smaller. The screen is slightly smaller. You don't care. Anyway, the point is... <laughs> Uh, it is aiming to wrest the lead, wrest the lead from Apple and Amazon in audio entertainment distribution. I'm laughing because it says Google Inc., Apple Inc., and Amazon.com Inc. <laughs> like we don't know they're all corporations. Anyway, just funny when you're reading it. Um, they're trying to wrest, as I said. The lead from Apple, Amazon, in audio entertainment distribution, despite the absence of a major record label. In other words, there is no Google record label. Give them time. The phone is ringing. Don't worry about that. But give them time. Google probably will have a record label. Anyway, Google Music with more than 13 million songs will be integrated with the Android market, the company's online store for smartphone apps and videos, as it plays catch up with its rivals. Apple, Amazon, and Facebook have to varying degrees integrated music into their core online and mobile product line. So there you go, Google Music. I don't know. I'm still working on Google Plus as a thing. You know, Google Plus is okay, I like it, but you know, Facebook is Facebook, and people are on Facebook, and it's kind of the social thing. The only thing about Google Plus is that right now, at least, Google Plus is more geeky. It's more for the true geeks. 
because the regular folk are over on Facebook. So, okay. Speaking of Facebook, <laughs> next item. Facebook says that they have stopped the porn spam that has plagued them. Now this is bad. <laughs> Facebook is considered kind of a family-friendly site generally. Okay. Uh, yeah, you might dispute that, but yeah, okay. But anyway, <laughs> generally they're considered family-friendly. Uh, and there's, a, there's certainly a whole lot of families that talk amongst themselves out there and friends and so forth, and that's all good. But imagine, if you will, you know, on Facebook you have what's called a wall where you can post pictures on your wall, kind of like, kind of like back in my teenage years when we used to put posters up on the wall of our bedroom. Eh, kind of the same thing. Anyway, so you put pictures up on your wall. Well, imagine, if you will, you come into Facebook one day and there on your wall is posted all kinds of really disgusting porn images. I mean, I mean, porn is bad, okay? But the kind of porn that they had involved things we don't even want to think about. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this is like, anyway, enough said. Point is, stuff you didn't post, but it's on your wall. Now, that doesn't do your online reputation any good, if you know what I mean. Okay, so Facebook obviously got on this rather quickly because their rep was on the line here. And so they had to stop this bombardment. Now the, the thing is, the porn spam attack was leveled at Facebook as a kind of, uh, I won't say retribution, that's kind of the wrong word, but you know what I'm saying? They didn't like Facebook, whoever was doing this, and they just wanted to kind of take them out. And so that's why they started this. And so Facebook had to come up with a way to prevent this from happening. Obviously a security issue. So they claim now that they have kind of gotten a hold of it. Now, a lot of people were so upset by this, and I can't blame them at all, that they were going to just leave Facebook entirely. They all go to Google Plus or something, you know what I'm saying? But uh, Facebook claims they have now stopped the attack. The Star Tribune newspaper reports, Facebook has said it stopped most of the spam that has flooded many users' pages with pictures showing graphic sex and violence. The social networking company urged its 800 million plus users, think about that, 800 million plus users, to remain vigilant and keep their accounts from being hijacked. This includes reporting suspicious links on friends' pages and not clicking, get this, not clicking on links that are too good to be true. If you have a link that says, if you click here, I'll give you an iPad 2, chances are that's not valid. Just saying. You know what I'm saying? Okay. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is an awesome offer that you've got right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon to partake in a deal. Now this is a deal that may seem to be too good to be true, but it's really true. And that is that you can have a 30-day free trial of GoToMeeting, Citrix Systems GoToMeeting with HD Faces. Now that means HD capability built into GoToMeeting. You don't have to go to a, you know, go to all the trouble to go to a meeting, get on a plane, fly somewhere, do all this kind of stuff. No, you can do it over your computer. Use technology. And you can do that by GoToMeeting. It is simply the best tool to have an online meeting, period. Okay, so use this special URL right here, GoToMeeting.com, and enter the special keyword podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, podcast, enter that code, and you can have a 30-day free trial of GoToMeeting with HD Faces. So check it out. It is an awesome offer, and it's available right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon, because we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network. I forgot to mention that earlier. But it's true, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, and that podcast code word, allow, code word, code word, allows you to use GoToMeeting 30 days free. It's a great deal. So, take advantage of that. All right, next item. 
Sony is considering an internet-based cable network. Now you know that a lot of us geek folk have been wanting to cut the cord of cable, the cable companies, because the cable companies are charging us lots and lots of money to watch cable TV. And there's good stuff on cable TV. The USA network alone is worth its weight in gold. And I don't know how you weigh a cable network. That would be hard, but it's really cool because it has great shows on it, awesome shows. And I like the USA Network shows. You know, I mean like um, Psych, for instance. It's silly, and I like silliness. You know that. Um, and also Burn Notice and lots of other shows that are awesome, but they're on USA Network, which is a cable-only network. You can't get it over the air. Now, you can get all the regular major networks over the air. That's fine. You can get those for free. But to get a cable network, you kind of got to have cable. Well, now Sony is talking about having a cable network, quote unquote, that would have USA, for instance, but would come over the internet. Now, as soon as they did that, I'm telling you, they would have a successful venture because many geeks like me would jump in there and want to participate in such a venture. IPTV, Internet Protocol Television, which is what you're watching right now, is the future. I'm telling you. I don't know what good it is to know that as it's not like you have stock options in IPTV. But anyway, it's, it's an insider trading thing that you know that now. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, whoa! <laughs> that drum roll is telling us it's time for Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is... Are you ready? S uh, Sly Soft. I started to say Sky Soft. It's not Sky Soft. It's Sly Soft. Virtual Clone Drive. This software... This software helped me out uh, a couple weeks ago when I needed to upgrade our Edge site installation at High Point Regional Health System where I work as a system administrator. I work with Citrix, I work with VMware, and I work with Red Hat Linux there at High Point Regional. Now, as the Citrix administrator, I needed to upgrade Edge Site to the latest version. Edge Site is Citrix's um, monitoring and statistic offering tool for Citrix uh, Zen app, which is primarily what we use at High Point Regional. And so I needed to upgrade Edge Site. Well, you could go to the Citrix site and you could download the ISO image of the CD that had Edge Site on it. All I needed, I didn't want the, you know, the whole ISO, I didn't need the whole CD. I didn't want to take a CD and stick it in a, a machine somewhere. I just wanted a couple of files off of it. So I needed to mount the ISO as a drive on my local computer so I could get the files I needed off of it. So I thought, dude, you know, there needs to be a way to do that. And there is. It's called Virtual Clone Drive. And it's absolutely free. Now that's what I like about this. This is free. And you know I like free. And so you download it. You install it. You point it to the ISO. And that ISO gets mounted as a drive letter. In this case, my drive letter was E. I feel like Sesame Street. This week is brought to you by the letter E. <laughs> Anyway, the point is that you can, you can then connect to that drive, drive, and it's really the ISO file, and then you can get the file off of it that you want. How cool is that? It's awesome. So, free, slice off, go to the website, the link is right here. You go to the website, you download it, and it is all good. Yes. Now, next item. This is important. Pay attention. Do it. Why, you ask? Because it involves you. I'm using my finger and pointing at you again. I like that. Anyway, it's like the 3D effect. Anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> this item is talking about revision three. Now, you know I love revision three. 
It's got some cool programs on Techzilla being my favorite. But it also has the Ben Heck Show. It also has uh, Hack 5. Very geeky Hack 5. Not for the non-geeky. Telling you, you'll go, what? So anyway, but if you're a geek, dude, Hack 5, place to be. Anyway, it's, it's full of hackery. We like the hackery. <laughs> anyway, point is, Revision 3 offers IPTV, which is what we were just talking about just a few moments ago, IPTV to the masses, particularly the geek masses, of which I are one. <laughs> I know that's not proper English, but you know it's just silliness, and I like silliness. Anyway, the point is, Revision 3 is dropping support, kind of, for Flash. They actually, they aren't totally... But they're move. Let's put it this way: they're moving away from Flash and moving toward HTML5 and the WebM video format. Now, here's why it involves you as a viewer of Doctor Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. What would you think if I eliminated the Flash version of the show? Da da dum. You know, reminds me of the dramatic chipmunk video that was on the web, you know, where the, the chipmunk turns and goes, da da dum. <laughs> anyway, never mind. The point is, if here's the reason that it's a good thing to eliminate Flash, I wouldn't have to render it into Flash. It takes a long time to render software into different formats, to transmogrify the file into different formats. And I have a lot of formats that I support that I make it all, that I offer it out there for you, for you to have formats. <laughs> that sentence just, just died. It just went off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> just forget it. The point is, I have M4V, as you know, as a format. I have WebM out there as a format. I have MP3 audio. I have OG audio because it's open source. You know I'm all about the open source. And what else? And FLV, Flash format. So if I didn't have to do the Flash transmogrifying, it would speed things up and you'd get the netcast that much faster. Yes. So I'm seriously considering dropping Flash as well as Revision 3 has done. So they have a new player on their site that uses HTML5 and uh, so forth, and I'm all for it. Now, we'll say this. I'm having a hard time here with the netbook getting it there to go where it needs to go. Netbook. Yes, and that is, of course, the drbill.cc website. Just saying. Okay. What was I talking about? Revision 3. <laughs> <laughs> Revision 3, and yes, I was going to say that the PowerPress tool offered by Blueberry, B-L-U-B-R-R-Y, Blueberry, a network of which I am also a member, as well as TechPodcast.com, uh, they, both of those networks are divisions of Raw Voice. Raw Voice is the company that Todd Cochran founded, along with other awesome, like, Angelo and all the other good folks there at Raw Voice do a great job. And they have a plugin for WordPress called the Blueberry PowerPress plugin. It's hard to say as well. That's why I slow down and make sure I say it correctly. Um, but it will automatically take advantage of uh, HTML5 and will show the video through HTML5 or it will drop back to Flash, which is what the um, Revision 3 player does as well. Okay? So, you can get that technology for your WordPress website free through PowerPress. Just wanted to mention that. Okay? All right. Now, the Amazon Kindle. The Amazon Kindle Fire is a new tablet-based e-reader. I guess that's the best way of saying it. And it looks cool. It's a 7-inch tablet. 
and it looks awesome. Now I've cross posted this over to the handheld hack, handheldhack.com, my other website and blog and netcast, because it ties in there as well. But the story here um, reminded me of a joke. So I'll tell the joke, okay? Here, let me just read it from the blog because it's kind of, you know. There's an old joke about the vendor in New York that bragged that he sold his wares cheaper than anyone else. Yeah, said his competitor, but you're selling below the actual cost of the item. Ha, said the vendor, I make it up in volume. Get it? Selling below cost, even at volume, nets you no profit. Think about it. So, here's what they found out. They did a teardown, teardown experts at IHS iSupply, spelled very strangely, found that it cost $201.70 to build Amazon's new Kindle Fire. That's almost $3 more than the device's $199 retail price. Well, guess what, folks? If you sell something for less than it costs you to make it, you lose money. I'm on top of these things. <laughs> but this is a case where the old joke actually does work. They make it up in volume because if they get enough people using the Kindle Fire, then yeah, they're losing money on selling the Kindle Fire, but they make it up selling books through Amazon electronically and the other content they're going to be offering, music and video and so forth, all of those things, these services they're providing through the Kindle Fire, they'll actually end up making money by offering their uh, tablet at a loss. And getting it under that $199 mark is what's going to cause them to be successful. So dude, they actually are able to make it up in volume. Okay? Pretty cool. Anyway, trust you enjoyed the netcast this week. Tell your friends. Call them up on the phone. But you're supposed to do this, right? Call them up on the phone. I was holding my fist to my head instead of doing the old phone thing. That doesn't work. Looks like you're hitting yourself in the noggin. What is that? Anyway, call your friends, email your friends, tell everyone about the drbill.tv netcast. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Of course I are Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. You know, it's like Toys R Us. I are the Computer Curmudgeon. That doesn't work, does it? <sighs> oh well. I guess it's time to say that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.